we know that if we continue uh, to respect uh, the environment which all these resources come from, that we'll be successful in the long run. I'll say that I've never heard of anything called a tipping point within the community. It's always, a, you know, how do we use our foundations and our practices to move forward? We're trying to reinterest our community into this, uh, you know, uh, science that is built on observation, built on uh, getting to know a particular area for uh, thousands of years. Uh, and you have to realize that we as tribal people, we're very dedicated to our homelands. indigenous technology it's been around for thousands and thousands of years but can be used in a very new way to think about n not new for indigenous peoples in the Pacific Northwest but new in general to think about a climate adaptation measure indigenous peoples have witnessed change you know over thousands and thousands of years and have been highly resilient and adaptable to that but again that very sensitive observational skills that have been developed over all of these generations have really played into how tribes are at the forefront of addressing climate change because many tribes have been witnessing it far longer maybe than western scientists have and realizing that it's an issue and that it's happening much more rapidly than say other changes could happen. As an example one of our adaptive strategies at Swinomish is that we're building a clam garden, which is an ancient indigenous technology. But one of the great things about clam gardens is that it's a low-lying rock wall built on the tidelands around mean low tide. So oftentimes you won't even see it. Um, but what, we've, what they've been finding, particularly in British Columbia, where there's a lot of remnant clam gardens that still exist, is that they've moved over thousands of years because people have moved them as as tidal elevation levels have changed. And so you can see that tidal elevation levels haven't been the same over thousands of years. They've moved and these walls have moved with them. And so now with us building the first modern day clam garden in the United States, we're creating um, a new clam garden based on this ancient indigenous technology that's also an adaptive strategy because that wall will move as sea level rises. It's never been a a thought process of everything's broken, we're going to fix it, but more of a we're very resilient, things change, we're going to continue to adapt with our traditional knowledge and teachings and our ways of life and really create those as our foundation. And so it's not, I mean, I find often in, in Western ways of thinking people are like, people assume that there's a stasis and you always have to get back to that stasis that particular way. And it's just not the way that I find that a lot of indigenous communities think. They, you know, with that thousands of years of knowledge, they realize that there's always change. I think that um, basically as you see the U.S. government trying to take indigenous knowledge and indigenous practices away from indigenous people, really what folks are thinking of is this is the way, this is the way forward, is, is to come back to these knowledge and these practices and not specifically fixing the environment, but ensuring that as the community has that connection with their place, they're able to move forward as that place may change. Everything has a soul. It has a spirit that uh, quite often we have to uh, we thank the spirit of that for giving up the slice so that we could we could survive.